Hey everyone, Mark here. Welcome to my channel and it's good to be back. Uh, been out of commission a little bit, been busy with some uh, things here and there. Uh, the eye surgery, I am happy to report, went extremely well. Almost 20-20 vision in this eye and that's saying a lot because I was practically blind as a bat in that eye. Um, have had glasses since I was a young child. Um, so I've been uh, having issues with my eyesight for many years. So uh, for those who reached out and uh, sent prayers and well wishes, thank you from the bottom of my heart. That truly meant a lot to me. Um, but yeah, the recovery went, went well. Um, and, uh, you know, I can resume normal activity starting tomorrow. And then <laughs> once I do that, I'm good for about a week. And then a week from today, which I'm making this video on Friday, March 1st, um, I'll have the surgery on my right eye. So hopefully everything will be perfect. But uh, thank you to all those who reached out and uh, sent your prayers my way. It, it, it means a lot to me. So the purpose of this video, um, I was doing these for a while at the later part of last year. I um, want to kind of get back into uh, reviewing the Follow That Dream label, or FTD as they're known, uh, the CDs. Um, and uh, <clears throat> I was doing them there for a little bit, kind of got away from it, haven't been real consistent with my videos. I want to kind of pick that back up uh, where I was, you know, a year ago at this time. But we're going to review what, in my opinion, is one of the best FTD releases I have ever heard. Um, it is Elvis, Pokes Out Annie. And this is, uh, says Las Vegas, February 1970. There is the cover. Tried to get rid of some of that glare there. Um, there is the back cover, a great picture of Elvis during that season. Hopefully you can see the track listing. Hold it there for a second. Gotta love that glare. Um, just a simple uh, opening. Um, there's a picture, that's from 1969. I, I find that a little odd they put that picture in there. And then there's a picture of the Hilton, um, a picture of the forthcoming onstage album where a lot of these songs were recorded during that season. And then, I don't know if you can see that. I'll actually read it. It says, Elvis special poke salad with corn muffins and honey, $1.95. That's a bargain, man. That's a, that's a great buy for uh, that time. Um, so this was Elvis's second season. It ran from January 26th through February 23rd of 1970. And in the middle part of February, uh, RCA recorded uh, five of those shows to pull songs from those shows, which then became the On Stage album, which came out in 1970. If you do not have that album, do yourself a favor. It is one of the best albums Elvis ever did. Of the 1970s, it's my third favorite album behind That's the Way It Is and Promised Land. And then on stage, February 1970 is, is next. And it's very close with those. All those, those three albums are pretty close together um, as far as being favorites of mine. Uh, songs that uh, other artists that Elvis did kind of made them, a, them a, his own. And, uh, you know, just that's a live uh, uh, album, of course. Uh, but just one of the best well put together uh, album that I've heard. It's, it's one of my favorites. It, it's in my rotation and uh, just a well, well-made album. But this concert uh, was on, the, it was the Midnight Show, February 15, 1970. It's one of the only known uh, complete, almost complete, I gotta say almost complete. For whatever reason, RCA, when they were recording, it's a multi-track recording. The recording didn't pick up until halfway through I Got a Woman, which would have been the second song. So, by this time, he was still opening with um, Blue Suede Shoes, as he did in 1969. So uh, the opening, Blue Suede Shoes, and part of I Got a Woman are missing from this. Um, and it does end with Can't Help Falling in Love. Um, but there are some really great highlights. But Elvis was in an absolute wonderful mood. He was having fun with his bandmates, with the crowd especially, the girls, of course. Um, you know, giving him, you know, the... Uh, um, Kiss, you know, the kisses from the girls in the front off and the uh, front row, front office, front row. And um, you can just tell he was in fine form, great voice. The band sounded terrific. Now, <clears throat> one note Ronnie Tut was not on this tour. I guess he had another commitment. So Elvis had another drummer uh, fill in for him. He does an admirable job. His name escapes me, but he was on this particular season with Elvis. Um, but the band in general uh, just sounded incredible, sweet inspirations. Backing. Everything was, was perfect. 
but Elvis was in great form. Now, Elvis did have a really bad cold uh, during this season, and uh, uh, but his vocals didn't suffer. He still sounded you know, top-notch. Uh, you can hear him clear his voice, cough a little bit, but he just had such a good time. You could tell he was really engaged in this performance, uh, especially these early performances. It was before it became kind of habitual and kind of, you know, he just kind of went through the motions. But uh, some great highlights on it, some songs he introduced for the first time during the season, uh, Kentucky Rain. Uh, there's a fantastic version of Let It Be Me on here. One of the best versions I've ever heard. Uh, Walk a Mile on My Shoes. Uh, which is on the 19th, the on stage album, uh, in the ghetto, Sweet Caroline, which is a favorite of mine, always has been. Um, his introductions, even that, you know, back then, of course, were short and sweet, which I liked. The later 75, 76, 77, when, you know, they were like five minutes long and each band member did a solo, it became a bit much, came a little bit repetitious. And then there's some bonus songs. Um, you have Release Me, CC Rider, a very early and slower version of Proud Mary. Really, really cool version. The Wonder of You, a favorite of mine. And if you're watching, I know it's a favorite of yours as well. Release Me, another version, like a shorter version of CC Rider, and like part of a version of The Wonder of You. But this is a fantastic release. I'm going to play a snippet. I'll, I'll, I'll play um, so you can hear it, so you can hear the sound quality. It's hard to hear through the through this phone, but just to give you an idea, um, this is really a really great version of... Uh, uh, let it be me. There's a beautiful song that came out five or six years ago by several different people. It's not my song, but I'd like to sing it for you. Go! Doesn't it affect those voices? He had a really bad cough this, this cold this whole season. It still sounds spectacular. So with this being a multi-track, you can hear that one mic isn't higher than the other. The instrumentation, the backing vocals aren't higher. Elvis isn't way up in the in the in the um, stereo effects. The crowd, you can hear real clear. It's it's just, it's a phenomenal phenomenal release. Not. 
a little over three minutes. little bit of a bonus for you beginning of I can't stop loving you but yeah I can't recommend this enough um a copy was actually on eBay for a pretty reasonable price this release is from 2004 uh informed a couple of my friends about it and the one friend that I talked to is also uh a good friend of mine in the Elvis community uh she went ahead and uh, made an offer there was a best offer on it she made an offer a brand new sealed copy and she snagged it she has it on its way to her so I uh I'll be curious to think what she or see what she thought of it, but yeah, keep your eye on it. It can still be had. Just an excellent, excellent release by the Follow That Dream label. Um, so that's going to be it. Uh, thank you, Aunt Lisa. I want to get back into doing these reviews again. Uh, that's my hope. But uh, thank you for uh, watching. Uh, those who are recently subscribed, if you like what you see and you want more content, uh, and I'll try to be a little more consistent with releasing videos. Uh, please consider liking and subscribing. Until next time, we'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.